Hey hey, welcome to part 6 of our quick start tutorial series for the Polychop SA342 Gazelle here in DCS. In today's video we want to take a closer look at the trim and autopilot capabilities as well as the auto hover function of the Gazelle. This part is mandatory for one of our upcoming videos, the weapons employment of the M variant. As always I appreciate the likes, comments and subs. Thank you in advance for your constructive feedback. Let's start. So welcome back to the cockpit. As first we want to do a little system description of the trim system of the Gazelle. We have two ways to trim the aircraft. The first and recommended one is the magnetic brake. As you know from the startup you have to turn on your magnetic brake switch here to get it work. Most of the joysticks that you will have at home are spring-loaded joysticks. Especially for spring-loaded joysticks it is really good to have the magnetic brake. What is a spring-loaded joystick? As you can see, if I set the cyclic to the forward and I release it, it will snap back to the middle. So what does the magnetic brake? We have our magnetic brake switch here on the joystick. We will come to the key bindings later. And if I place the joystick to the front and press the button, I can release the joystick and the joystick will remain in this forward position. So. While flying, I can set up a cyclic position, push the trim button and set my hardware joystick back to the middle, but the virtual joystick will remain in its position. It sounds quite complicated, but we will get used to it later. If I press the reset button, you can see now the cyclic, the virtual side cyclic, jumps back in the middle position and it's the same position as my hardware joystick. So we can fly, push the button, release the um, cyclic, the hardware cyclic in the middle and the virtual uh, cyclic will remain forward or backward or left or right. So at this part we will release it again. Of course this is quite useful while in flight. I will show you in a minute why it is so useful. The second possibility to trim the aircraft is via this little switch down here. To be honest, I didn't set it up. I will show you later in the keybinds how to set it up, but I never use it. So if the helicopter is in flight, you can use your normal trim button on your joystick to lower the nose, raise the nose or um, adjust bank via trimming. As I said, I never used it and I think it's not recommended to use it. If you like it, you can you can do it, but for me, I only need the magnetic brake. Maybe a little hint for people who have a force feedback cyclic. If you have a force feedback cyclic, I would recommend to turn the magnetic brake off because you don't need it. For all guys out there who have a spring-loaded joystick, which I think is the most of you, use the magnetic brake. So before we can take off here, let's switch to our control setup and to the SA342 and we should bind the following commands for our part today. First of all, we need the trimmer, the SA342 trimmer. That's the trim button for the magnetic brake. So you need that one. Of course, in the second phase, you need also the trimming reset button. So you can also see the keyboard keybinds, but I highly recommend to do this on your joystick because you don't want to you don't want to leave your flight controls for typing on the keyboard. You always want your head hands on the controls. So trimmer and trimmer reset. The next one we need today is the SA342 auto hover toggle. Please also set this one up. I have it on my war talk on the thumb switch, so if I push it, I can toggle the auto hover. The next one we need for today is the auto collective toggle. So you need the auto hover and the auto collective. For me, on the war talk, I got it on button 21. That's the uh, normal aircraft, it is the gear switch. Next, which is highly recommended, is the right control and enter. Um, that's something you don't have to you don't have to bind to a 
uh, to a joystick button, but that's the window on the in the corner on the bottom left here, and for me, I have it always on because we can see our autopilot modes that are on. So also please um, bring up this little window so you can see if the autopilot is toggled or not. Sorry for the break guys, I'm really sorry. I totally forgot to show you now the forehead trim switch for the normal trimming, which we don't even use in this tutorial. So in the key bindings, there are four buttons you can assign for lower nose, raise nose, bank left and bank right. I'm really sorry that I forgot to show you, but we don't even need it in this tutorial. So we just continue now without these key bindings. Sorry for that. So I think that's enough for the theoretical part. I will switch on track IR here. And what we want to do is now we do a normal takeoff and I will just show you how the trim works. So we adjust a bit of anti-torque pedal here. We just do a hover and going towards the north. And now what I will do, just take a look at the bottom left here if i remain my stick in the middle position you can see the helicopter will raise its nose by itself so i have continuously adjust my uh, to i have to continually adjust my flight stick here so if i remain it in the middle you will see the nose raises again i have to adjust if i release it the nose will come up again so what i want to do now is i place my stick in a position that the aircraft stops raising nose, so for me it is here. You see it's just a little input on the bottom left. As you can see it's just a bit, so the helicopter raises again and as soon as I have an attitude here which I want to remain, I just simply press the button for the magnetic brake and release the joystick. So my hardware joystick is now back in the middle but we can observe here that it is pointed a bit forward. So we can do it now in the extreme, so I will just give a lot of collective and I don't want to climb now, I just want to speed up, so I will give a bit more nose down input to the aircraft and the helicopter will raise its nose again, so I will place the attitude I want, magnetic brake, so the hardware joystick is back in the middle and you can see we have a bit forward and a bit left here. So, if we press now the reset button, of course, the virtual joystick will jump back to the middle position and the helicopter will raise the nose again. So, we will try that one now. And as you can see, the trim is now on a reset and the helicopter starts raising the nose again. So, you can use the trim to adjust your flight path and you don't have to continuously hold your hardware joystick in the position that is needed for yeah, for remaining the attitude. So we just will, we will just do it again. I would recommend if you start to hover again or you, you change your flight path or you want to land, simply reset the trim before, uh, before you do any hovering stuff. So here again the nose is raised so I will just bring my stick into a position that is fine for me and trimming and you see in this case we have slide forward slide right and the aircraft remains its attitude so that is the magnetic brake if you now bind the normal trim buttons for nose up down you can simply press this button to adjust the the nose or the attitude of the helicopter but as you see here if you use the magnetic brake there's no need so i can now place it at a zero um, zero velocity for the VSI and push the button and you see my hardware joystick is now in the middle and the virtual joystick is just a bit forward to maintain my attitude. So we do the reset here again, the nose will raise and we have again full control over the helicopter. So that's the magnetic brake. Welcome back to the ground. The next topic we want to cover is the autopilot. As you remember in the startup procedure as soon as the engine is running and we have 
uh, and we have power, we can turn on the autopilot and the dampers. Remember the dampers should be on so the needles should be in the middle. We can see here if the autopilot is correcting some of the attitude stuff but it isn't really important for us so it's only important that they are in the middle and they are switched on. Please remember also to align your gyros in the startup. So we have to switch GM and have to wait about one minute for the gyros to come on and for the AMP to come on. That is important. Don't forget this step. Okay. So next we want to bring up our axis here with the right control and enter. And you can use two modes of the autopilot. One is speed. And the other one is altitude. So the autopilot is capable to maintain your altitude or your speed. It's quite self-explaining. But I think I don't want to talk about this too much. I just show you. Remember, to engage the autopilot, you have to be in limits of the autopilot. So if you want to turn on your altitude hold mode, you have to... To, you, you need to be in the aircraft state for that. So if you are currently climbing with four or 5,000 meters per minute and you switch on the autopilot, it won't work. So it has to be in limits. The second, altitude hold means barometric altitude hold. So it's not above ground. So um, if you fly towards a mountain and you turn it on, it won't climb over the mountain. It will only maintain your barometric altitude. So it's a barometric altitude hold mode. So I think I will just show you. So we take off here and I will do a quick and dirty air taxi towards the runway. And I think, well, the manual doesn't say about that too much, but I think you have also, you have to be over, I guess, 60 or 70 kilometers to get the autopilot work. So we will now just align on the runway here. Ah, that was too much, I guess. Ah, no, it's fine. Okay. Ah, no, a bit too much. So, and let's now fly, I would say, ah... We are now at about 120 kilometers per hour. So, first of all, we have to to set the aircraft up. So, I will just switch to active pause here. We have now normal attitude. We have a speed of around 130 kilometers and the VSI shows zero. That's important. So, I want the aircraft to be in the state that I just have to give the controls over to the autopilot without the need that the autopilot has to adjust the aircraft. So we are now at more or less zero feet per minute and I can now turn on the autopilot altitude hold and as you can see on the bottom left, that's why we want this window opened, we see altitude in white. So now I know, okay, the altitude mode of the gazelle is currently active. But what does it mean altitude hold? Altitude hold means as soon as I will change the collective, it will lower the nose or raise the nose to maintain my altitude. So with the collective, I can now adjust my speed. I will just show it you, uh, show it you here. So if I now take a closer look to the collective, if I now raise the collective slowly, you see the nose will go down because the autopilot wants to maintain the altitude and my speed increases. So there is no climbing, even if I raise it to the top here, you see torque, we just increase our speed but our altitude will remain the same. The same vice versa, if I go lower, if I lower the collective, you can see the raise will be, uh, the nose will be raised and we will maintain our altitude but the speed will decrease. Cool! So let me turn off the autopilot here. I have manual control. You see, as soon as I will change the autopilot uh, to off, it will immediately start climbing. So let's do the same with speed. So I will now turn on speed and you see speed mode is active. 
and what the helicopter does now is it will always maintain my speed of about 100 what is it 145 kilometers so with the collective i can do climbing if i raise the collective you see it will maintain my speed so if i raise the collective here we will start climbing and if i lower it it will start descending but it will maintain my airspeed as good as it can so there are the two autopilot modes of the gazelle mostly we will use altitude hold so i will just apply this one more time and you see also if i'm not in the parameters so just let me do this here and we switch on altitude there is no altitude shown here so the autopilot for altitude is not active okay speed works but altitude not to engage the autopilot mode in altitude hold we have to maintain we, we can also use our trim here so now we have zero on the vsi altitude and it's on and i can now raise my collective for increasing speed so there are the two autopilot modes and they are really good so if you have long distances for example over water to travel use it it's perfect and it yeah uh, it works quite fine so um use it <laughs> use it <laughs> welcome back to the ground one more time the next thing we want to cover is the auto hover function the auto hover function is uh, really important especially for the m gazelle later on if you want to employ the weapons and uh yeah i will just show you how the auto hover function works you already set up your keybind for the auto hover there are several limitations that we need to get into the auto hover. First, the ground speed has to be lower than 18 kilometers per hour. The roll and pitch has to be lower than 30 degrees and the vertical speed must be less than 60 meters per minute. So to easily speak, you first have to bring the helicopter in a hover by yourself and as soon as you are in a stable hover you can push the auto hover button to give the controls to the helicopter there are two ways two techniques to do this first of all we want to switch on our nadir just give me a second here we have a little switch you can turn that one to ground speed deviation why because here we can see on the upper part of the display our ground speed so this can help to to figure if the ground speed is lower than 18 kilometers per hour but we already already practiced the hover so we can also use our waypoint function here with the needles on the artificial horizon to get into the hover and of course we want to show our axis again because you know there are all autopilot modes showed so i think we just give it a try so we will just do a hover and you can follow your needles up here and let me find a good view that we also can see the nadir here so that's quite good so currently we are in a forward movement as we can see per line we have 25 26 27 uh, kilometers ground speed and if i push the button now you can see nothing happens so we want to bring the helicopter to a uh, hover here And it doesn't matter if it's in ground effect or not so let me push active pause here we have now the needle centered here we have yeah we have a bit of climb rate here and we have three knots on the ground speed so we are actually fine so just let me do it while the mission is running so we are in the limits now and let me push the button auto hover and what you see here is hover and collective will turn on i will have now released my flight control so i'm not working on the aircraft at all and as you can see the helicopter remains a hover what it does it is a little bit it's banking to the left and to the right that's totally normal but the hover is quite stable this is so important 
and so helpful because now I could switch to the left hand side I could do all the weapons employment I could do stuff in the cockpit uh, switching radios and so on and that's perfect because uh, most of the time in DCS and at the current version of the Gazelle multi crew does not work as it should as it is intended so um, use the auto hover function before you try to engage with any weapons especially in the M Gazelle so what would do what do we have here in the bottom left the red ones are the the controls that you have set up so for example my rudder here the red one is always my hardware rudder the white one is the rudder uh, the autopilot uses so if i want to turn off the auto hover it is recommended to turn my rudder over the white one so if i now switch the auto hover off it remains in the hover if i don't do that and i just switch it off you will see it's like the helicopter will start turning so you can adjust your controls to the autopilot controls before taking the aircraft back okay so the next important thing we also uh, bind before is the collective button you see the helicopter is now in the hover mode so in the hover hold mode and in the collective hold mode later on um, maybe we hide behind trees behind a ridge line or behind a house and maybe we have to do an adjustment in our height for our targeting system of the helicopter so that's why we already bind our collective button um, the collective toggle button and that's quite cool because I can now turn off the auto collective and I can now use my collective why while the helicopter is still in hover so if I raise the collective now you see we're climbing we can do a, a pop-up then I can lower my collective to hold the altitude and I can also go back towards the ground so we can do some pop-up maneuvers so I can I can tell the helicopter with the collective button please maintain the hover but the collective I want uh, I still want to use if we want to re-engage it we just have to place it, uh, the VSI on zero, press the button again, and collective hold is engaged again. So that is really useful. We will see it in a later stage of this tutorial series why this is so important. But it's good that you already set it up. So we will give the, the rudder here also the collective. You see the collective, it's the same. So place the collective below the white one, place your rudder behind the white one push the auto hover button again and you have control over the aircraft and you can continue flying so i think for the understanding i will just show you how it works so we are hiding at this house at the moment and as you see on our targeting system we have a window one of these here um, in front of us we are in the auto hover and also in the collective hold mode so and what I can do now is I can turn off the collective mode and we'll just raise the aircraft a bit with the collective very smoothly until our helicopter can look above the the house here a bit more yeah that's fine that's a bit too much a bit of fine-tuning but we will do this one later on and just turn on the collective hold mode again and if we now take a closer look that's a bit deep uh, deep dark deep dark of course so we can turn this one on and we can now start searching for targets while hiding behind this house here and if we need to cover again for any reason we can just Turn on the collective again, just lower the collective a bit, hide behind the house and do the VSI, place it on zero, press collective hold again and you can see you can, you can do the pop-up maneuvers while the helicopter still maintain the hover for you. So there we are at the end of part 6.
Today you learned all about trimming the aircraft, use the autopilot and the auto hover function. You are now able to do pop-ups with the helicopter by the use of the collective hold mode. In the next episode we take a look at the M variant of the Gazelle and do all the key bindings and assignments for the use of the Vivian, our sighting camera at the top of the Gazelle. I hope to see you in the next part, stay healthy and all the best.